Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Snowpiercer. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. And I think I like the... Um, way they handle this story, uh, whereas you have Asha, who is becoming more, has more belief in all of this, versus Andre, who's losing his faith, because he, he ends up talking to her and asks her, like, okay, like, that, that whole New Eden thing, like, he's like, I, my vision, I first had it with you, and he, he pulls out the picture, and she's like, yeah, I, I recognize it from a calendar, so it's like, yeah, it's all made up, but she's like, no, but... She believes wholeheartedly, like I said, when Andre's losing his faith, she is. Because it's like, right, I crafted a place because I so desperately wanted there to be hope that I created something out of a lie. But beside that, you know, um, Asha was like, you've finally made a believer out of me, like the way this train operates. Because... She ended up getting in it with Ruth because Ruth found out she was stealing stuff. She was kind of hoarding stuff because she wasn't, she was always afraid like, oh, this would all end up basically going away. Like, you can't trust it to last forever. But, you know, because Asha finally, you know, she opens up. It's like, right, Andre never got the full story. After the Marauders died, we turned against each other. And my desperate need to save my nephew and protect my nephew, I ended up per poisoning everyone. And then my nephew ended up dying from cancer anyway. I was alone afterwards. So it's like, yeah, karma got me back. It's like, I did all this to fight for that person just for them to die uh, in a terrible way like that. And just for me to be left alone. And now it's like, she's here aboard Snowpiercer and she finally feels it because she had said that her grandma said that thing that basically it essentially when things go wrong um in a way it's almost like it's setting itself right and the way she interpreted that was like how can something so like how can hope spring from such disaster and terror terrible stuff but now here aboard snowpiercer taking care of the plants again like Finding a little bit of herself again. She was like, right, like, there's so much she had forgotten that she started remembering before the freeze. Because she talked about the fact that she was, all, she traveled all over the world, you know, to uh, reactors and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, Ruth was like, oh, yeah, like, I never really went and did any traveling until Snowpiercer. And, um, but Asha was like, right, it's one of those things. She's like, I mainly did it to run away from my mom. But she was like, it is family. It's that thing you took for granted thinking it would always be there. And then the world died, you know? So, but it, it is, it's like I said, interesting thing, like, you know, Andre, because he ended up confiding in Josie about his concerns, even Zara, which the Zara thing is so interesting this episode, because it's hard to say where her allegiances lie. Like, is it just because that time while Andre and the others were away, she did get closer to Wilfred, either because she knows how to pull on his strings, or did he plant a seed in her like he did? Like, what, is she technically becoming like the new Audrey, as Audrey slipping away from being who he made her into again? Could Zara be, because Zara is able to like, you know, oh, even letting him hold the baby. It's like knowing who Wilfred is, you it's like, oh, because you're almost in this together, like partners is how he views it. So I'm like, is Zara, I mean, just like, because Andre himself said it like, right, while I was going, like, I try to make us like an old version of us. And Zara is like, I get it. But like, the fact is we have one joint responsibility and that's taking care of our daughter. She's right here. Like, that's our one major uh, joint Thing. Like, we don't have to fit the mold of who we used to be, you know, because we're not the same people anymore. And I'm thinking the same thing kind of is applicable with Zara. Like, who knows? Because we only got peeks into that window. Like, we don't know fully all. Like, we got stuff here and there, but we don't know how much changed between Zara and um, Wilfred in that time. So, like I said, I can't tell if that's her genuinely being like, oh, I, um, I genuinely, like, believe that I can, um manipulate you like either she's like 100 percent is on his side and stuff like that or she's like placating to his like ego and making him seem like everything's copacetic just so she can get close enough to get some information because he's the one that's sitting them on this journey because it's like right he's the one that told us about melanie but it's like why would he do that and he'd only do it for self-preservation but the question is how can finding melanie help his calls because melanie's the one that sent them on this mission to be like yo there's a there is a future the world is getting warmer so finding her why would that be an issue but then you have um zara figuring out that she could be divisive and i'm curious like the the definition of that division like what do they mean what does she mean specifically is it because the moment melanie comes back and it's gonna she's gonna contradict a little bit of like oh we're going to new eden and maybe her presence will actually um 
slide more towards like a oh this isn't a right like it it will contradict or like you know pull at the threads of the lie that Andre spoke like maybe in in that way but it seems like that's what it is and I, I think the division is for him it's like because even Andre was like right you're trying to crack that little spark of hope all of them had because them rallying behind him with this spark of hope is what took the train but it's like right the moment i break that so it's like right so you still are yourself you're still vying for power you're waiting for the opportunity because you have your your supporters like scattered throughout still there but they're not as strong as they were one of your main supporters uh that being kevin is dead so you got to rely on other people like lj still trying to take advantage of the situation because she is the opportunist that she is Obviously, Oz isn't too keen on that. He's like, yeah, I'm pickling stuff for us to get off the train so we can survive and stuff. But LJ isn't all about that. She's like, no, what about Mr. Wilford? Like, does he know what's going on? So she went to Dr. Headwood, who's running experiments. And it's like, oh, cool. Let me uh, take this flesh off of you, which made my skin crawl. I was like, blah, blah. and the fact is that afterwards, LJ was like smiling about it. It's like, yeah, she is the weirdo that she is. So the, that girl is disturbed, obviously. But... We do see that uh, Dr. Headwood has somebody back there. So I'm like, is that her hubby? Like, did she find a way to... I mean, they've always been the Frankenstein couple. So did she, like... Is uh, is her hubby her new Frankenstein monster? Or is that someone else? I'd assume it'd have to be... I'd assume it'd have to be her hubby. But it could... I guess maybe it could be someone else. I'm about to say, I was like, could it be Pike or something? I was like, no, no, no. Because I don't think the tail would let her get his body. Not unless Headwood grabbed his body after the fat. But it's like, no, he was dead, dead. So I'm assuming that has to be like her hubby. He's still alive and um, she's keeping him. And I kind of a top secret, like, is it something Wilfred knows about? Is this just kind of her own secret, like, Victor Frankenstein thing? Once again, the whole thing, everything they've been a part of, whether it be Zara's baby, Josie, uh, Bob... Wasn't that, wasn't that big dude's name? It's been a while. I think a uh, big guy, uh, the guy who Josie's predecessor was Bob, right? So maybe something along those veins is kind of being happening here, or just maybe she just reanimated. I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. They made sure not to really show you. All you saw was a hand, so we'll kind of see where things kind of go from there, but. I am curious, because it does seem like Wilford, even Andre was like, yeah, Wilford honestly didn't know about the circumstances we would find ourselves in. The, um, with the, tri well, the, the volcanic, like, uh, acid, stuff, but not acid, what was it? It was, uh, it was like volcanic ash and stuff, like, mixed into it, but basically it was very poisonous and it was very corrosive, but, you know, and obviously Wilford kept asking, like, oh, Asha, like, so, uh, New Eden, like, you know, how did you get there and stuff like that? He's like, yeah, because I wasn't on your train. And he was like, oh, he, you know, that was enough to shut down the conversation. But obviously doing his poking and prodding because he doesn't know the lie. But it is a thing of like, oh, like, it feeds into the lie. The fact is you found someone out there that it's like, right, finding someone like because on the train, Snowpiercer was supposed to be the last of humanity. So for there to be someone else here, it's kind of like a, oh, uh, yeah, um. It added more validity to the lie. But even he didn't account for all that volcanic ash and stuff like that because he's like, yeah, me and Alex, we came through here like 18 months ago and it was clear. So, and I don't think we ever got a real explanation of what went wrong on Snowpiercer. I think it was just like maybe uh, it was just, just a malfunction because Parma was like, could there have been like somebody purposely messing with that? But it's like, no. I mean, I guess there could be, but it, they never really went into that this episode. It just seems like it was just something that malfunctioned just because I guess it was a lot more taxing on the system. Like, uh, just, you know, they were supposed to be able to, like, deal with that. The corrosion shouldn't affect, like, you know, jo uh, Joseph is so, like, you know, Wilford's like, oh, my God, like, it's so good. Like, it's all accounted for. But I guess, like, there's always that room that has to be accounted for when it comes to error. So, like, it didn't. They weren't fully prepared. Like, I don't know whether that's just how long the train's been going and maybe something in that time. Like like I said, they never really went into like what the the issue we, we found out what it was and discovered. I don't think they ever really explained how that issue came about. Just like what malfunctioned. So it's interesting because obviously Sykes and Javi are working on like, you know, him being around uh, the dog Jupiter again. I watch, I love, he's like, yeah, I'm supposed to shit my pants every time I'm around a dog. She's like, well, luckily, just bring, bring another pair of pants because there's only, bring enough pair of pants because there's only two dogs left in the world or something like that, so. But she's like, I'm sorry, that was kind of a terrible joke, but um, I think it does show that 
Avi is ma like obviously she was saying like okay you may you're making more and more progress there but in that moment like when she was choking a little bit and dying like he was panicking because he heard a dog barking but to protect her he grabbed her and dragged her away so it's like yeah he definitely is making progress you know and was ended up kind of able to resuscitate her and so if this issue had continued, it would have spread to the rest of the agriculture on the train and they would have been seeing the end of all that. Like they would have run out of food and stuff like that. So they had to like immediately jump on this problem, but they would it would involve them having to manually do the intake for it. Um, I didn't talk about it, but it did add an if different like eerie and like even Zara talked about it. It's like, oh, it's kind of scary. It's like, yeah, it is. Like, because I think that orange shoe is also meant to be seen, like, almost like a version of hell. Uh, because it's like, right, you've always had, like, the pristine, like, white blue because of the snow. And then, like, just all of a sudden, the scenery being, like, is, like, orangish red like that. It's, it is spooky, like, what it does to the lighting on people's faces. I'm like, oh, that's, that lighting is so sinister. It's so good when everyone's kind of diving through. And once again, everyone's kind of finding their way through it. But we'll get to that in a second. Sadly... They had to manually do the thing, but with their suits, they wouldn't have been able to fit in the hole. So Asha takes off her suit because I think for her, maybe in her own way, because she believed Andre could lead the people to New Eden. She believed in him because it's like, right, you've saved so many other people. You've saved me as well. You kept these people fighting. You kept me fighting. When I had given up, you gave me a reason to fight. And so I'm here to fight to make sure you survive so that you can lead these people and have them continue the fight to survive as well. Because that was also the thing, too, for her. It's like, how can you ever really fully come back, you know, when you've done so much to sacrifice for the sake of fighting for survival, the nasty things you do, like how do you ever forgive yourself for that? Which Ruth is like, you do find a way past it because they've been through it so many times and yet here we are, we're still standing and we're finding our way together. And Asha kind of believed in that now and she wanted to sacrifice herself for that sake. It wasn't just, you know, sacrificing for survival, sacrificing for survival and hope. Having just survival doesn't always equate to hope, but having hope as well, you know? And she sacrificed herself for that. And Andre's like, please, come on, come on. I'm so hoping he'd be able to get to her. But she's like, it's too late. Um, even saying like, you, um, you have to keep going, Andre. Like, Tell me what you saw. And he described New Eden to her and she died. I'm like, that's heartbreaking because I wouldn't have expected that. I mean, you introduced her this season just to kill her. But I think it's also impactful because it came at a time where Andre had no belief. Her sacrifice, her death, her saying, keep going. It's like a juxtaposition to before his accident. Who did he have? Pike saying, like, I hope it was all a dream. I hope it, I hope it all ends up being fake and terrible. And then he ends up in his death scene sequence and he finds out wait i made it all up so when his sh faith is broken and shattered asha who had none to begin with who now became a believer had to be the one to reinstill that faith in him and i thought that was beautiful and um andre was like she said we have to keep going and ruth is like yeah we do you know she sacrificed herself for us to do that so we can't you know make that sacrifice in vain you know and i think she she died having that vision of like ah oh, like that's a beautiful thought of like you know what new eden is you know you know turn your face to the sun and it was just like honestly i started choking up a bit because i didn't expect them to kill her off i was like that's wow that that's heartbreaking uh, but i think also for asha it was her way to be finally reunited with the people she cared about but also it's like right i get to make up for what i did i got to do some good rather than just living because that was always her big thing like i think that's what caused a lot of the panic it's like that dark hole she was in and even Ruth was like yeah she thought like yeah my penance was me being stuck in a dark hole it's like that was going to be the end for me it's like but it wasn't and here you are you uh you played a big role in this you know and like I said, I just thought that was heart wrenching, and especially when Andre's kind of like at the end of it, just like sitting there. Especially later on, he's holding her helmet. Uh, it, it, there's a there's a beauty to that, but like I said, it was also shocking because you'd expect her to stick around. Like I was like, oh, they went out of their way to make this new character introduce her. You'd think she'd be sticking around for a while. It's a very Walking Dead move, in my opinion. I mean, probably Game of Thrones does that as well. I'm sure it just doesn't feel like you see many shows that do that. Oh, I introduce a character just to kill them a couple episodes later. It's like okay. Um... I mean, they didn't even wait the full season, like, oh, season finale killer. It's like, no, a couple episodes before the season finale, let's ask that character. That's just wild to me. But the reason why I reference Walking Dead, because Walking Dead, it did that a couple times. Like, oh, I introduced you to this character. Oh, you're dead? 
okay especially how like walking dead is structured where you don't follow all the characters all the time so like sometimes there's a character here that oh you only follow them a little bit because you're bouncing between so many other stories it's just one of those things that's the immediate description i come to, uh apt comparison i make just because i'm more familiar with the walking dead than i am like um game of thrones for example so i'm not saying game of thrones never did it i'm just it's just surprising to me Maybe I'm also saying like other shows probably did it too, but I just think from a show like a storytelling purpose. I mean, because you you just automatically because when it comes to main character stuff, you're like, oh, the kid that, that character has plot armor. So you think like, oh, I, I guess in my mind, I'm like, okay, she's a new character. She plays such an important role because she's supposed to be the representation of the lie about New Eden. So of course they're going to be keeping her around. I just, you know, I just it, it never crossed my mind. Think they'd kill her off. That's that's all. That kind of shocked me. I'm, like it really hit me. Like oh wow, I didn't expect you to do that. You know. So there's all of that. There's the whole situation with um, surprisingly um, Bess and Audrey, which I thought was interesting because. Audrey is at kind of her low point and she's like she wouldn't want Melanie to see herself like see her like this because like the thing she's feeling now is shame you know and like right I wouldn't want um Melanie to return to the train to see me like licking the boots of his train or something like that is what she was saying and even when Bess was like oh yeah you can stay at my place I was like oh well she hasn't lived with anyone since season one since that relationship kind of went kablooey I think that was like the last time. So I was like, oh, are they setting that up? Because it seemed like they might have been hinting towards that. But then like the moment they get their best was like, yo, you need me? And they're like, no, we don't need you. She's like, okay. And she's like, oh, I guess we're... Because she was like offering her place to Audrey, but it's because she thought like, oh, I'd be out of the room. Wait, we're going to be in the room? Okay. Oh, okay. And obviously Audrey's not, not drinking or anything, but she's like, oh, I can make you something. And Audrey doing what she normally does to heal people, she did that for best because... Bess has basically been living in the shadow of who she was because at the end of the day, all that she's done, all that everyone in this train has done, she thought like, I'm still beyond forgiveness. Like who she was in the beginning, she was like, I was bigoted, I was cruel, I was terrible. I put on that uniform and it's like, yeah, you took that uniform off, but it's like for her, she feels like I'm still rotten to my core. It's like your past might be rotten, but your core isn't. I know who you are, Bess. All you have to do finally is see who you really are. See yourself for the first time. And kind of got her to finally, like, not fully let go of the past, but I think I can't, I think more akin to accepting that part of herself that that was her past, but that doesn't define who she is. And I even love that, like, the imagery of her hugging Bess, both Bess as she is now, but also, like, showing Bess in her uniform again as a brakeman and hugging. So it's like, right, like, the dual sides, like, the past of you and who you are coming to terms with that that past doesn't define you, that you are who you are now. So I thought that was, um, I thought that was a beautiful element to it, so. Um, there's also, like, you know, uh, Roach helping Carly with everything. Because Carly's like, yeah, there's some part of me that hopes that, um, you know, that um, mom, you know, Anne would be out there with uh, Melanie. She's like, I know she is, and I know it doesn't make sense. But he's like, no, I wake up every morning. Part of my process, you know, Roach is like, I think she's in the closet. I look for her high and low. And then when I see you, like, farting or snoring or something, she's like, till dad. He's like, what? No, that's what, what what happens. But he's like, it reminds me that you're here. So it gives me an opportunity to focus, focus on something else. And that was a big part of this, too, is, like, everyone finding their way forward, kind of focusing on something else. I thought there was kind of some beauty to it. And so him playing the music, kind of dancing with his daughter, like them finding their way forward past everything, their tragedies that they have their, like, you know, everyone has their way of dealing with things. It's, you know, um, as uh, Audrey was talking to Bess about that, because Bess was like spending so much of her time, like self-loathing and drowning herself in alcohol. But I think this will help Bess find a way forward. That's not nearly as potentially self-destructive. Um, and I think that's kind of a bit of that for everybody. I even love... Because um, despite the conversation, Ben and Alex were like, yeah, we don't know if Melanie's actually out there. You know, because it could just as easily... Because it's almost like taming your expectations. But it's the thing of even Alex is like, yeah, she might not be there at all. Or it might be that we find her body. She's like, yeah, that's kind of my go-to. But talking to my friend Al, uh, my friend Carly, which I think is super sweet. She's like, yeah, my friend Carly. That it's like, yeah, like she doesn't have her mom, but it's like, right, if my mom is out there, 
why not take the chance? So she's like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and I'm going to take that chance. And Ben's like, she's a good friend. He's like, and she's like, I hope so. She's like, I've never had, I have very few of them. And I thought that was sweet, you know? I just liked how that all kind of balanced itself out. And so at the end, because the whole point was the thing can go on for a very long time, but there's no supplies up there for people to survive. So the question is like, with where it is now, they're like, oh, that is Melanie. But the thing is like, is, is, are they going to find a body? It, like, what what are they going to discover? Like, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I did not watch the preview, obviously. Uh, so I'm unsure. I mean, usually uh, for the past two seasons, they've done it. Or the season finale has been episode eight and nine back to back. So I'm assuming they're going to do the same thing here. Maybe not. So uh, I'm excited to see where all this takes us about this discovery about whether or not it is Melanie, but also coinciding with the whole, I think they probably are going to do a back to back cause it, it almost, it fits perfectly. Like, I think, I think they do that specifically cause of the structuring of the episodes and it just, it makes sense to do the bam, bam, because it's like, right. Not only is the Melanie stuff, but then like probably a big chunk of like the final, the season finale will be like, Oh, uh, new Eden itself. Like depending on how the aftermath of this Melanie thing plays out. So maybe we'll also, cause it's interesting, too, because, like, Melanie pretty much got her own episode last season when she was on her own. Uh, so, I'm assuming they're going to do kind of a similar thing in this, where, like, maybe the next episode shows you everything that Melanie's been doing. Like, you know, just when, like, Wilford's been seeing her and Alex has been seeing her, you know, she kind of did the inverse of them. I think that was kind of supposed to be the inverse of, like, what she did last season, so maybe you get more of that. Um, with all, you know, the different people she sees uh, in that time frame, or maybe it's just going to be like a, is she dead? Is she alive? We'll have to wait and see. Like, maybe they won't even like make it a whole episode thing, like of like from her perspective. So, uh, I, I didn't watch the preview. I don't want to know. I, I avoid it for those specific purposes. I want to go into an episode knowing as little as possible. So I don't want to even know if it, it even inklings to that in the, uh, promo. So either way. I'm excited to see the next episode, potentially the season finale, like I said, if they do the back-to-back -back episode, which I'm assuming they will, but maybe they won't. Uh, but either way, I'm excited to see what happens next. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.